Hello, everybody. E here. Uh, I have a an, a new idea. Um, I, I I don't know how I'm going to implement it. We're just going to jump right into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reading journal uh, live, and then I will be posting the videos on the channel, edited uh, to like the, the the best parts, and then I'm going to chop it up into shorts and all that stuff because shorts are really popping right now. Um, but the, the main reason I'm doing this and the main reason I had this idea, um, I was talking to my wife, Shell, and I was like, the part of the problem with working as much as we are and, and reading other than sight issues, I'll get to that in a second. Um, the, the biggest problem is remembering, picking up where I left off in the book. Um, I have problems if I don't read huge chunks of a book at one time. I can't remember what exactly went on. It's probably because uh, I have a touch of the tism. Uh, I have ADHD. I have dyslexia, all this stuff. And now I have geographic atrophy, which we'll talk about in just a second. We talked about it a lot yesterday. Um, but yeah, so I figured I'd do a reading journal where I will come on here. I'm not going to be reading from the book, but I will come on here and talk about what I read um, and then during the editing process, it, you know, I'm going to be able to chop it up and do short content and video content for the channel. And then at the end, finally do a review of the book. So what this video is, is literally just going to be me talking about the book. Um, I'm going to be reading some lines that really, that really struck a chord with me. I'm going to be talking about what I love, what I dislike, all that stuff. Luckily, I don't have anything I dislike yet. In fact, this book has gotten me, gotten me. This book has got me super excited for reading again, and it's exactly what I needed. It is, it is the perfect subgenre. Uh, but anyways, to, we're talking about uh, The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. Hello, everybody. I'll be with you in a little bit. Let me get this beginning part out. Um, so, yeah, I read 40 pages last night. It was a struggle. The first 20 pages especially. Um, I have what's called geographic atrophy or GA. Um, basically my, the vision in my left eye is now curved. Uh, so if I look at something like a straight line, I'll see like a, in a bubble, like the, the lines pregnant. Um, what happens when I read, I also have dyslexia. Um, so it's mostly just sight words for me. Like I've, I've trained my brain to understand because I read and write so much. I've trained my brain to understand that this jumble of letters over here is this word this jumble of letters over here is this word. Um, now I'm having to like tilt my head and keep my head moving while I'm reading. Otherwise the letters blurred together. Uh, yesterday I had several foibles and it's only black text on white paper that I'm having huge issues with. If it's a black background with white letters or any other color letters, except for black, of course, um, I'm not having any issues with that. So, um, I, I read the first 20 pages and I was literally exhausted, tired of, you know, moving around, trying to figure it out, but then it got easier and I was able to read the next 20 pages, uh, in half the time it took me to read the first 20 pages. So the hollow kind is one of my favorite subgenres is anytime there's a, an evil ancient entity or whatever underneath a town or a house or so on and so forth. And this book opens with a fucking bang. Um, right off the jump, you get an idea of what we're dealing with. It's a, uh, it's not a flashback, but it's you know, something that happens in 1988, I believe. And I will be chopping this up into the pages that I read every day. So expect every day that I read, I will be here. Well, I will be here the day after uh, to talk about what I read. Um, so the very first. I guess you'd call it a prologue. It's not really a pro. I, I don't know. Maybe it is. Uh, the book jumps around in time. It's 1988, September 7th. It opens up with uh, this man named Redfern. Um, and there's a it, there's something going on in the house. Um, he has he, his life is in danger. Um, he's setting things on fire. Uh, like I said, this is the very first chapter of the book. But I wanted to also read um, a, an, an excerpt from this. No spoilers. <clears throat> um, but we already know that there's something that lives underneath the house or underneath the town or whatever. That's in the synopsis. That's in the description. So I want to read you guys how the, uh, the exact paragraph that I knew this was going to be the book for me. 
All right, it's on page four of this edition of the book. I believe it's a first edition hardcover. Nigh a century you've been here, old friend, old enemy, old god upon your throne of dirt and blood. Your voice, the wind in the pines to me. Are you weak from all these lean years of hunger? Ill-fed on possums and rats, snakes and toads? Will you beg me now when you speak my name? Oh, if I had, oh, if I had more time, I'd starve you right out of the goddamned earth. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so it goes on. Other things happen in that sh very short chapter. It's only like four pages, but it was. There's just more of that. Andy Davidson is a wordsmith. Uh, his, his the cadence, his structure, the the way he writes. It's a. I've long said this. Good writing is giving the reader a beat to dance to. And I don't mean literally, even though I do suggest with your writing to make it flow as easy as possible, put some music on and try to sing your sing your sentences. And if you can get a good cadence going, you're heading in the right direction. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes we have to, you know, we, we have to do the standard, you know, the standard stuff. But give people something to catch their attention. Give them something to dance to. Um, all right, so the next the next thing I have here is oh no no all right it's page six all right here's another line for you from hell's heart to his own no great distance in the end Ooh, boy 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 what are you doing to us? What are you doing to us? So good. So good. All right. Page 16 now. Page 16. I should, I really, I need to get those little sticker tabs. That's what I need to do. So um, the, the next section is from an individual named Nelly, uh, her perspective and her son Max's perspective. And it switches to 19, sorry, 1989. June 30th, okay? Um, so it jumps ahead in time from 88 to 89. And Nellie is Redfern's granddaughter, I believe. It's it's kind of murky right now who's related to doing what and whatnot. I'm pretty sure it's grandfather. Um, but she's on the run. This is another one of my tropes that I enjoy. People on the run from like abusive relationships and whatever or trying to start a new life and experiencing horror in the new place too. So... They're stuck out in the woods. I won't tell you how, but they're stuck out in the woods trying to get to the house that they're, that Redfern has left for them, trying to get out to the house. And she the, the vehicle has broken down, and she's debating whether or not they're going to sleep in the truck or walk the next half mile to the house. Um, it's out in the dark. I won't tell you what happened, but it was, it was a very tense situation that led up to that moment. Um, and the, the child asks, uh, can we get over that? You're going to have to read it to understand what that is. Um, and they, they, they're they going back and forth. She's stuck in her head. Is like, I don't know. I don't know whether we should go on or whether we should stay here. And the, uh, the boy says, no, no, sorry. She says, how does a shark stay alive? She asked the boy. It keeps moving. Given the context, it might not sound like anything great now, but given the context of that scene, that was a wonderful piece of dialogue that was, it might sound vague, but it is the perfect and succinct way of getting into those characters' heads and knowing that they are going to do whatever it takes to progress, to move forward from the situation that they're in. And I love the relationship between Nellie and Max already. It's absolutely fantastic. Um uh, again, the writing in here, I read The Boatman's Daughter, um, which is, I believe, the book before this, or maybe even before before this. I don't know. But Andy Davidson is a wordsmith. He's amazing. And if you haven't read him, I highly recommend The Boatman's Daughter, and I already recommend this one. So we're caught up. Um, I can go to chat now uh, and talk with you guys. But that's my idea. Spend like, you know, five, ten minutes getting my thoughts out, then chopping those up into shorts, and then... Uh, also editing the video to put it out on the channel as a video. 
Also, the last two episodes of Robocop are finally coming. As soon as I get done with this, I'm going to upload those for those of you that are interested in the video game content. But uh, that's all for today. Until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been the first episode of Reading Journal. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.